We're going to start with a demonstration today. I have these two stereo speakers, and when they play, you know how they work. This cone is pushing in and out, and it's making compressions and rarefactions. And the compressions and rarefactions travel towards the microphone, and they're picked up. It's sound waves. But we've got two speakers, and what happens when we combine the sound from the two speakers? So I'm going to take this one and tr turn it towards the other speaker. And then what happens? It's not a huge surprise. It sounds about the same, perhaps slightly louder. And that makes sense because I've got two different sources of sound. But now I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Now we're going to do a second demonstration. This speaker I'm going to unplug. So here's one speaker. Now I'll plug it back in. Here's two speakers. Slightly louder. But now I'm going to unplug this speaker and switch the leads. So now this one is going to be completely out of phase with the other speaker. So when this speaker is pushing out, this one is pulling in. And what happens when you combine two sound signals that are completely out of phase with each other? Here we go. Oh yeah, a lot quieter. So I'm going to take this speaker and I'm going to unplug it. I'm removing sound from the system and when I do that, it's louder, it's louder. Or another way to look at it, if I take this system and I add sound to it, I've made it quieter. And how do you do that? How can adding sound to a system make it quieter? That has to do with something called superposition and interference, topics we'll talk about in this segment. So we just saw a demonstration with the sound from two speakers. And when I took the two speakers and let the sound come together, but I took one speaker and flipped the wave so that it was exactly out of phase with the first one, where the two waves overlapped, it canceled the sound. So somehow adding sound to the system made it quieter. And to explore why that happens, we need to look at a property called superposition, and it's also called interference. Now, we're going to use the wave machine to explore this. Wave machine, if I shake a wave on this side, it travels down, goes to the other end, bounces back. I can also shake a wave from this side. What happens if I shake a wave from each side? Wave from the left side goes to the right. Wave from the right side goes to the left. They come together. They hit. What happens to two waves when they collide? Let's take a look and find out. And what happens is this. When I shake away from this side, shake away from this side, the two waves come together, and where they hit, they just pass through each other. But we're interested in the instant where the two waves overlap. So the wave machine is carrying both waves at the same time, and then each point on the wave machine does what this wave tells it to do plus what this wave tells it to do. So I end up with a wave in the center that is bigger than any of the individual waves. And let's watch for that. We'll do that again. Watch for the so-called superposition. And look at how big the amplitude of the two waves is in the center. And right in the center, when the two waves overlap, you end up with an extra large wave. It's just the sum of the amplitudes of the two waves put together. Now, we call this a superposition, but this particular type of superposition we also call a constructive interference. But there's also such a thing known as a destructive interference. I'm going to take this side of the wave machine and shake a wave that goes up. This side, I'm going to shake a wave that goes down. When the two waves come together, where they meet in the center, I want you to say something about the total motion. What can I say about the amplitude of the total of the two waves right at the point where the two waves overlap? We'll give you some choices. So I'm going to have a wave that goes down on this side. I'm going to have a wave that goes up on this side. What happens when the two waves meet? Let's find out. And you can see right at the point where those two waves meet, there's a destructive interference. They actually cancel each other. They actually cancel each other. So in that case, this one went down, this one went up. Where they overlap, the sum of the two is a very small wave indeed. And so in the middle, there was very little motion. And that's a so-called destructive interference. 
So we've got constructive, destructive interference. Two waves, if they're in phase, they overlap, and you have a bigger amplitude. If I have two waves that are out of phase with each other and they overlap, I have a destructive interference, I have a smaller amplitude. Those are important points that will help us with what we're going to talk about in the chapter. But another piece of the puzzle we need to look at is this. We've seen what happens when two waves hit each other. What happens when a wave hits a boundary? And that's something we want to look at next. We have this wave machine right here, which is the one we've been using. Waves travel very slowly in it. And I've got one here where the waves travel much more quickly. And the two are linked together at this joint. So if I shake a wave in this medium, it's going to travel. And it hits this boundary between where the waves travel fast and where the waves travel slow. It hits a boundary in the two media. What happens at the wave at this boundary? Let's take a look. I'm going to shake myself a big wave. And when it hits the boundary, some of it is transmitted, some of it is reflected, okay? And those are words that you've seen before. And in fact, whenever a wave hits a boundary between two media, there's a transmission and there's a reflection. And we have some examples in the book that show how that works for different waves. But it also sets up the next thing we want to talk about. The end of the medium is also a boundary. So when I shake a wave here, it travels out to the end of the medium and comes back. It reflects from the end. And because that's true, the end is a boundary, I have the property to set up another special kind of waves that we'll see in the next segment.